Hey guys, happy holidays. How you doing? I'm doing great. Um, I got my Merry Fracking Christmas sweater on. Hey, Oilfield friends. There's really one thing, only one thing that I dislike about this time of year, and that's having to tear all this down. So I thought I would uh, start off this episode with this beautiful Christmas tree and Santa in the background. By the way, Santa, you were very, very good to me this year. Now, Santa brought me all kinds of cool stuff like this old cactus cooler can. You're coveting this, right? Because we all know that we can make a tin can microphone out of this. I got this kit, too. I think I'll do an episode on that. Hey, are you watching close? Because I just switched hands in that take. I also got this Maxwell House coffee can. And you know what I do with these. I make these. Here's one I got on the bench right now. Hey, it has an electrical switch for an electric chair, an electric chair matchbook. That's going to be special. I know you're thinking right now, how could it possibly get any better than that? Well, it does because I got a first edition copy of The Land Where the Blues Began. And this book was written by Alan Lomax, um, and this is going to uh, lead into this episode here, which is about how to build a cane fife. Remember me telling you about this a while ago? Well, I'm finally getting to that episode. Now back to Alan Lomax. Um, people either really like Alan Lomax, or they really don't like Alan Lomax. And um, let's face it, outside of the Wisconsin Chair Company, who was Paramount Records, who recorded a bunch of stuff until they went out of business in 1932. If it wasn't for Alan Lomax, we wouldn't have a lot of the early blues recordings that we have now. Yeah, for example, Sun House in the background there. Yeah, I'm a Sun House freak. Um, Sun House was first recorded by Paramount Records when he went on a, a trip with Charlie Patton to Grafton, Wisconsin, just after uh, 1930 about two years before um, Paramount Records closed down and he wasn't recorded again until about 1940, 41 for um, a Library of Congress, which was Alan Lomax. Now, Alan Lomax's father, John Lomax, was the one that kind of started recording, uh, basically trying to capture some stories and folk music and things of uh, age that was going to disappear. And his son, Alan, carried that on through the Library of Congress. Now, we hear stories of, well, he paid the people in Coca-Cola. Um, his books were um, embellished more than they were true. Anyway, um, you can get copies of this relatively cheap on abebooks.com. Abebooks.com. I'll give you a link below. Anyway, this is a good read. Uh, you might want to get a copy. Okay, back to the cane fight. Alan Lomax first recorded uh, a person named Sid Hamphill, and I've talked to him a little bit about, uh, in one of my episodes, about him in one of my episodes, as well as his granddaughter, Jessie Mae Hamphill. But the cane fife, or they call it a quill, or there's a set of quills that have different size pieces of bamboo, sometimes smaller than this, sound like, uh, you know that guy Zam Fur, Zam Fur Christmas, the pan flute guy? Yeah, it's all that kind of instrument. I know this has turned into a history lesson. If you like that, great. I'm, I'm glad you're getting it. it. These cane fifes, if you listen to the people playing them, you're going to hear uh, marching music, military marching music. In fact, I think some of it goes uh, to the time of the Revolutionary War. Um, and I think that the people who brought this music forward after that were slaves. Um, they were probably in the areas where they weren't so itinerant moving around with the floods. And that explains why some of this comes out of North Mississippi Hill Country where the Mississippi River does not flood. And I gave you a lot of information there if you're really into checking that out. But we're going to talk today about Other Turner. Now, I've got another awesome book here called Afro-American Folk Arts and Crafts. And 
this is a collection done by a university and within the, this book is a section on Othar Turner. Now, I went and saw his granddaughter, Sade Thomas, and a couple of her relatives play at the Getty Center here in LA. Um, and they have a fife and drum band called the Rising Star Fife and Drum Band, which goes back to her grandfather, Othar Turner. And I'm gonna give you a link below, or one will pop up, it's up here. And um, you'll be able to see Othar and Sade when she was a very, very small child. Anyway, um, before I forget, one more time, Afro-American Folk Arts and Crafts. I think you can find a copy of this book, again, on ABE Books for a reasonable price. It's a university book. It's got other things in here about quilting and, and different crafts that uh, became American folk art. Well, this cane fight, if you look close, it says Sade Thomas, 17. That's when I saw her perform at the Getty Center in LA. Um, just prior to that, I contacted her and asked her if there was any way I could have her and her family make me one of these cane fives. And this is one that was actually made by the Turners uh, by way of Sade Thomas, again, Othar Turner's granddaughter. You're going to hear Othar Turner pop up on the North Mississippi All-Stars talk, Kenny Brown, those kind of people from North Mississippi. But anyway, back to this. So I got this one, and um, it's got holes in it that are basically burned to fit uh, where your fingers go. So you basically just hold it up to your mouth. You blow into it. There's a main hole here, and then you change tone here. Now, I'm not good at this at all, but this is kind of what it sounds like. That was terrible. So we're going to go outside and we are going to make one of these. Um, now it's kind of funny. <laughs> my background is I'm an arborist. Uh, my specialty is palm trees, monocotyledons versus dicotyledonous plants, which are, are trees, but palm trees are monocots and they have some tendencies uh, that can create problems if you don't make these right. These holes are burned in here and there's a reason for that. And we'll talk about that while we're outside doing this. Now, if I don't do it now, I'll forget housekeeping at the end, subscribe button is in the middle, I've got playlists. And then one more thing I want to talk to you about that I got for Christmas. Um, my guitars are called Palmero guitars. Who's Palmero? Well, Palmero is a uh, Spanish word for someone who works with palm trees. Get it? Palmero. So, um, there's my logo. It's on a t-shirt. And if you're one of my junkie subscribers and you just can't live without one of these long sleeve tan t-shirts with the Palmero logo, get a hold of me. Throw away 25 bucks. Send me an email. We'll see what we can do. Okay, guys. Welcome to the bench. Uh, one more time on this outside of me if you need a better resource afro-american folk arts and crafts uh, put off by the put out by the university press of mississippi great resource hey check out that bottle tree there i'm going to before we get started here show you the worst enemy of a cane fife and that is a drill bit why a drill bit is the enemy of a cane fife, you're asking yourself. Well, these holes in here, you would think that the obvious way uh, to do these is to drill a pilot hole, then drill a little bit bigger hole here until you get these sizes, but wrong. If you look real close, you'll see that these holes are burned in, and there's a reason for that. Um, you all know what a tree is. You know that trees add growth. Uh, every year by adding another layer out here and that's where rings come from so trees grow radially and then they grow axially as well so up with the stem but mainly outward uh, there are actually four layers of growth on a tree uh, don't want to get into all that but trust me these are rings you've seen this before so trees are dicotyledonous. Now, grasses, palms, and bamboo, or fifes, are monocotyledonous, meaning 
they grow mainly axially in, in the way the stem grows. Not too much this way. You see the center of this is hollow. Um, these things widen because the cells get thicker as they get older, but there are no rings here. Now, just like between the branches on a tree where this is the trunk and a branch comes off here, uh, these are called nodes and bamboos grow with nodes. And if you look at the end here, you'll see that this is closed. So if you're going to make a, a fife out of this and you've got a node here, one of the most important things you're going to have to do is burn this out from the inside. Um, but back to the drill. Let's talk about why you can't use a drill. So let's get this tree stuff out of the way so we don't get confused and, and talk about what this all means and what that has to do with our friend the drill bit. Well, I'm going to give you a comparison of something similar to cane or bamboo and that's celery. And if you look real close, let me get my pointing gadget here or pencil out. You'll see that the veins in this, the vascular bundles in this, run straight up and down actually with the stalk. Now, if I do this, I've cut this, and turn this over, watch what happens. You see those strands, those vascular strands, want to come with it, and I leave a groove here. So, back to this. If I drill this, and trust me, I've tried, if I drill this out, what happens is these fibers get snagged by the drill, and the next thing you know, you've got a vascular strand missing. And as the cane fife dries out, sooner or later that's going to turn into a split. So do not drill these holes. So in the movies that you'll see on the internet of people making these, they put their fingers where it's comfortable. It's got a lot to do with tone. Um, and you'll see that they take a pocket knife, and instead of uh, just starting blindly with something trying to burn this in, they might do a little bit of this back and forth until they get a little divot there that they can take and burn. A couple things I want to point out here. This cane uh, fife that I got from Chardet Thomas. If you measure it, you want to remember that this end is closed. There's a node there that hasn't been burned through. It needs to remain intact. But we measure this thing, and it's about... 17 and a half inches long. Can you see it there? There we go. 17 and a half inches long or about 445 millimeters. 445 millimeters if you're using the metric system. So once I've got a piece of a cane, um, you can either use a rondo, uh, which is giant reed, or you can use stalks of different types of bambusa, which is bamboo. Those are the Latin names of the plants you typically use. But I'm going to start uh, with one. The node is here. It's close to the end, uh, just like this one here. I'm going to lay these two uh, side by side as much as possible. And then I'm going to take a straight edge and lay across here. Or if my eye is pretty good, I'm just going to make a mark there, 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 and then up here. Now, once I've got those marks made, of course, I'm going to do a center mark right here, and then I can do a little bit of this to make the divots before I start burning them. Once I know where I need to end up, I can make a mark right like so, and then I can take my fine a pull saw and just do this nice and easy and go all the way around. And use care not to pull, get any fibers that will pull because you see what happens here? These fibers get snagged. They start to pull. And the next thing you know, as this dries out, it will crack. All right, there we go. That turned out pretty well. Of course, when I get this out by the fire, one of the last things I'm going to do is burn this so it doesn't uh, fray out on the ends and give me a problem in the future. But I'm going to get a couple of these made where I can just go out now and burn the holes in them. Of course, I can't forget that there's a node right there, and if I'm going to have a, a hole here, 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 and here, and these are going to work, then if any of them are going to work, I'm going to need to take something and stick it down in here and burn that. See, it stops 
right there. Okay, I almost forgot. I told you that the enemy of your cane fife is a drill bit, but I haven't told you what we're going to use to put the holes in. There are a couple of things you can use. Uh, you want to remember, you're going to be dealing with fire, hot fire, enough to heat up metal to burn holes here. So there's a couple of things you can use. They have these little pry bars with the heel on them. Um, I like this because it's tapered. And it gives you the ability to get this red hot and stick it on there and twist it back and forth and make a nice uh, round hole. They come in different sizes. Um, the one thing you really want to watch out for, especially if, you're, if your uh, cane is narrow, you want to make sure that you don't go all the way through with this when it's hot like that. Um, but you can see this is a great size and it doesn't bottom out. Now, it will also work to go through and burn the hole through here on the node that you got to burn out. See that? Now, something else I have is I have a piece of half inch stock that I got from the hardware store. It is three feet long. Why is it three feet long? Because I can stand back from the fire, put this in the fire, and then when, once I've got a starter hole, set with one of these like so then i can just set this up here and be far enough away from it where i don't burn myself and just twist it back and forth like so until it burns through also works great from long distance where you don't get burnt to stick this through here and burn out that center node now let's go outside and fire up uh, my fire of choice and i'll show you something cool out there and let's get these done all right, guys, I got the coolest stuff. I got man cave stuff. Do not covet my man cave stuff. So let's get rid of this corn binder hat and let's put on this authentic Russian Ushkana. Are you cold? Not anymore. Here's a prized possession. This is the coolest patch you've ever seen in your whole life. Bill Jackson Rig Company. And that's right, super oil rig gloves. Now, I could use this torch to heat up this, to do this, but why would I do that when I have this? This is called a smudge pot or a grove heater. They would use them in orchards when the temperature was sinking to heat the orchard. Now, these things are really cool. They will burn diesel, they will burn bacon grease, they will burn cooking oil, they will burn my guy driving by and messing up my shot. Uh, but these things will literally burn anything. Okay, so you people in Wisconsin and Minnesota know what this stuff is. You put it in your gas tank so your gas don't freeze. We generally don't have that problem out here in California. So I'm going to put a little bit of this in here. And what we're going to do is this we're going to prime this thing we're going to use our torch that we would have used anyway but all righty we're going to heat this up a little bit like so and now we're going to kick off our primer Ooh, look at that oh yeah now the way this thing works is the more air it gets the more it burns as soon as I close that down a little bit and stifle it, we're good to go. Now, I'm going to take my tool here and I'm going to stick it inside of here like so. And I'm just going to wait a little bit. You also want to remember, why do this when you can go through some labored, some man cave process? like that use your head right all right let's do this node oh there we go right through perfect all right now i'm gonna heat this up and do each one of these holes here and we'll have a look when i'm done Alright, 
we're losing our light here pretty quick. And I've got a couple more holes to burn. And we'll have a look at it in the morning when we can see what I've done. Yeah, check out my cool teenage camera person. Oh yeah, and my bottle tree over there. Look at that. All right, it's daylight, so we'll be able to see a few things better as we call this video to a close. I got the holes burned in to the fife. I got this fired back up, my smudge pot. Oh, and by the way, Happy New Year, Scott H. Byron, Austin, Texas. All right, you can see from the model, the holes all line up, and I got my tools down here. The vent holes, my smudge pot, and I just took the heel bar, pry bar, and made those holes like that. Now, you want to remember when you push these through, it's going to leave it rough in here, and if it's rough, it won't sound right. So this is where this big three-foot one comes in. In addition to getting all of the nodes burned out it's real good for going along like so and smoothing out inside where you've burned out see how that's smoking put that back in here my smudge pot is freaking out with all that air but you've got to get the inside right and smooth before this will play the last thing I'm going to do is use some very fine wet dry sandpaper and I'm going to go along and knock down the top here on all of these holes and make sure everything's fine. I'm also going to do the end like this so I don't get any of those strands that peel off later and end up giving me a crack. All right, just like my guitars, I can't play cane fives either, but let's see if I can get this thing to make some noise. I'm no Ulster Turner, but there you go. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, I enjoyed making it. Um, make one of these and uh, do me a favor, Sharday Thomas, hit her site. There's a web uh, link below um, and patronize her. Uh, show her your support. She's carrying something that's probably six generations of families deep forward. Don't let that kind of disappear like my Christmas lights are going to do right now.